uh, good evening. This is Jennifer Elizabeth Masters. I just finished a session with a client that came to me because uh, she thought her husband was cheating. And they, she wants to work it out. And um, she contacted me because she kicked him out after they got back together, had a wonderful trip to Hawaii, and then she found out that he was still working with the person that she thought he had the affair with. Okay, so <laughs> the reason that I wanted to do this, this little video is because, you know, when we want love, I have to wonder, why do people play games? Because when you're playing games with your husband, you're not being authentic. So I'm having to encourage this woman to be honest with her husband. If you love him, tell him. So one of the issues was she he said it was all her fault. <laughs> that was one of the issues. So the bottom line is I asked her, okay, so did you appreciate him? And she's the breadwinner. He's kind of a stay-at-home dad, but he's, he's a musician and not making a lot of money. And I said to her, well, at this point in time, would you have him back even if he didn't earn a dime? And she said, yes. And yet, when they were together, all she could do was pick on him. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. You're out too late. You're not coming home on time. I need this from you. I want that from you. And what he wasn't hearing was, I love you. You're a good father. I appreciate you. Gosh, you look great in those jeans. All he was hearing was criticism. Now what happens, it's usually the other way around. <laughs> I'm talking about women are criticized by men, but this is the other way around. Now this woman is a breadwinner, which means she's running in the masculine. In other words, because she's the bread earner, she's having to be, rather than be the goddess and be the feminine, she's wearing the pants in the household. And at the same time, trying to grab him by the scruff of the neck and say, now do this and do that. So it doesn't work. And when we're trying to control our partner, can we be authentic? Well, absolutely not because we're living in fear. And if fear is what's motivating you, then you're not going to be able to tell him, I love you, come home. We have to be able to appreciate one another as they are. Appreciate your partner as he or she is, rather than wanting them to be something else. Because now this woman has, her husband is across town, not with her, not in the house. Her daughter's depressed, and children do get depressed. She's, you know, got a, a young child. Okay, so, so the other issue is if we don't trust ourselves, and now what do I mean by that? Well, we have to know what we want. If we don't know what we want, and we're thinking, well, maybe there's somebody out there that's better, or we're listening to our mother telling us that our husband is a piece of dog do because he's not earning, we have to turn around and tell those people that are saying things to us, please keep your opinions to yourself. Because right now what I need from you is support, not criticism. Because in the long run, and she ended up kicking him out because of what her mother said. And now crying the blues because she kicked him out. So what we have to do is have boundaries, hold strong boundaries, have our spouses back. When we're listening to our mother or our grandmother and doing what they say we should do, we're not tapping into what we truly want. 
And then what happens is, you know, when, when we do get face to face with somebody, then we're afraid to say, I love you, please come home. It's really sad that marriage partners married a long time cannot be authentic. You know, what do I mean by that? I mean, to be real, look them in the eye and say, I really miss you. I would like you to come home. I want you to be with me. Is it so bad to tell your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend, I love you? without games, you know, being really authentic and tapping into our heart and what we want. So when we don't trust ourself, we may think that we're making poor choices, but we have to be able to tap into our body and really trust what we're feeling. So Sometimes what's happening is there's a story playing in the mind. What if he does this? What if he has had an affair and he hasn't? But she's jumping to conclusions. But would you take him back even if he had? It takes a really big person to repair a relationship but if you really love them, is it worth severing the relationship over infidelity? Can you get over it? Can you forgive them? And here's the thing. If you really love someone and you think that maybe they're thinking about someone else, well, actually what the whole problem was is that she was not showing her love and appreciation of her husband. And so he said something to her to make her jealous. Why? Because he wanted to see that she really loved him. That's sad, you know, 15 years married, that you would have to make someone jealous for them to show love. I think today we are so darn disconnected. We, you know, we're on our cell phones too much. We're not talking to one another heart to heart. We're not looking each other in the eye. I have clients coming to me where they say that their partner sits over their computer at the table. They're not conversing heart to heart. They're not talking about what's important. Relationships are way too valuable for us to spend most of the time that we're together, either on our cell phone, texting, or watching the news. And the way to connect is hugging, touching, looking each other in the eyes, making love, and then not regretting it when we do. It's not such a bad thing to show someone that you really love them. What do we have to lose? In my household, when we get together, we put our cell phones down. You know, my kids and I get together. We put our cell phones down. We're not texting anybody else. We have quality time together. It's, it's really important to have that communication, that eye-to-eye, -eye, face to face where you can really show somebody that you're listening. How often is it that we see couples sitting in a restaurant? I see it all the time. I, I watched a couple. Here she was sitting here. The woman was sitting. He ordered, and she, she could barely break away from the cell phone to order her dinner and then went right back to whatever it was on the phone. Why even go out to dinner with your partner if you're not even going to have an interaction with them? The cell phones have got to be put aside, and they sure shouldn't be in the bedroom. When we have dinner, we, we need to sit together as a family unit. That's what's the problem with 
with our society today. That's what's the problem with families. You know, I, I see young people sitting on the couch side by side, texting one another because they don't even talk. And, and I hear about teenagers not even knowing how to interview because they're so used to conversing via text. They don't know how to form a complete sentence and, and sit in front of someone who's interviewing them for a job. Somewhere, somebody's got to stand up for the family. Families are precious. With, without family, where are we? We, ha we have to have tighter-knit families with husband and wife communicating, making love. The glue that holds the family together, you know, prayer. And then, of course, play. We have to play. Play is so important. So back to control in a relationship, because that's what this was all about. If you're trying to control your partner, why? What are you afraid of? Yeah, control comes from fear. And non-acceptance. So this lady that I was talking to earlier is very impatient. And I, I see them getting back together. But if she was left to her own devices, she would have ruined it already. So thankfully, she contacted me, and she's been working with me for several weeks. And the situation is getting better. They spent a day together on Sunday. The three of them, it was really powerful. So for those relationships that have breakups or have fights that it seems like there's an impasse and that you can't get beyond it, that's where someone who's neutral, who has guidance, can come in and help you stay grounded, authentic, and get yourself out of that fear. So that's what I do. I help people stay grounded and out of fear. I use energy work to help the situation. And yes, I can clear people without them being present. I just ask for their soul's approval. I ask the divine, is it okay, is it the divine timing to do this? All right, so complaining about someone isn't the way to show them love. Criticizing someone doesn't make them feel loved either. As a matter of fact, when we cri criticize our partners and our children, they feel unloved, they feel underappreciated, and non-accepted, unaccepted. So if you want to show love to somebody, it isn't by helping them with criticism. Help comes from listening, loving, accepting the way they are, not trying to change them or control them. So if you try to control your partner, it's fear. What are you afraid of? And if you cannot be authentic with your partner, why not? And the way we become authentic is by speaking from our heart, telling others how we really feel as opposed to playing games. Because game playing, I've got to say, game playing will ruin a relationship faster than anything. So I will just say, that in this situation, um, we did this process together where we pulled heart ties. And you know, when there is a severance, a, a breakup, you wanna pull the heart ties. And women have a heart tie and a sexual tie. So when you pull those ties, um, and I do a process with my clients to do that, you stop leaking energy to that person. So she had wanted me to get him to call he called, and then she didn't answer the phone. So that's what I'm talking about game playing. So if you want somebody to call you, don't play games. Answer the darn phone. Tell them that you love them. Accept them as they are. <sighs> okay. 
So one, two, three, go, everybody. Be authentic. Put the cell phones down. Speak from your heart. Make eye contact. And stop criticizing those that you love. Accept them as they are. Tell them how much you love them and appreciate them. When we don't appreciate others, they feel taken for granted. And no one wants to be taken for granted. I'm Jennifer Elizabeth Masters, and I'm here. I am the advocate for love. Does anybody have a question? Amen. Can I get a hallelujah? Anyone have a question before we go? Oh. I know, I've got one more thing. So I asked my client, how did she show her husband that he, that he was loved? And uh, she said, well, I cooked dinner. I kept the, the house clean. I took care of our daughter. And I said, and how is that showing him that you love him? And she said, well, I thought that that's what you know, that's what I should do. I thought that's how I should show my love. So here's the thing, is that, you know, I, I really love the book, The Five Love Languages. It's, it's a fabulous book because there's so many different ways to show love. But if your love language is an act of service, maybe your love language is, is affirmations and praise, then if somebody is giving you acts of service, you don't feel loved. You want somebody to tell you, wow, I love your butt. You've got beautiful eyes. Boy, you look great in those jeans. I, I love the way you look, you know, this morning. I love you. You're fabulous. You're a great father. Those are the things that somebody wants to hear. So if that's if your love language is affirmations, but there's so many different ways. And if you're only showing love by one way and it's not your partner's love language, they're not going to feel loved. Okay, so with that, I'm going to close. Thank you so much for watching. I am running, <laughs> running off on tangents here. But bottom line, be authentic. Be true to yourself. And don't think that you're helping someone by criti critiquing or criticizing. That's a good way to make someone feel undervalued and unloved. I love you, and I sure appreciate you. Thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Elizabeth Masters. Good night.